Padre Satma Asofa Haimu Bidyamiya, mögen die Segen der Heiligen, May the blessings of the saints and the light of God be with us. Every community coming together for Allah gives our souls a lightness and elevation of burden and a satisfaction, a sense of satisfaction. Just like a fish that has been caught out of the water and is being thrown back into the water again. And then it can breathe again and it found, has found a new life, that fish. A fish that found its way back to the water and can, fi can breathe finally. Like that, every community in the name of God and the Sohbet speech and the word of God to listen to that gives our souls strength, levitation of burden and health. And it's, a, it's freeing. The soul is freeing itself of the prison of the um, of the body. Once it is back in the divine presence, that's why we humans need to look after both sides and take care of it and show its respect, its material, its material being, its physical being, and as well its spiritual being, the, the body and the soul both at the same time, as they're both being entrusted to us. And the right of the body and the right of the soul, we have to respect that. But the humans, since Adam and Islam, the first human, they forgot as the human is forgetful. The humans got an ego, and that ego, the animal inside of the body, of the human being, makes it forget that it has a different being as well, a spiritual being. Its soul. The animal that is part of the body says, "Always, I'm, I'm. It's always me. Always take care of me, and nothing else. Take care of me in front of the mirror, behind the mirror. At night, at day, in the day." Every hour, be there for me only, so I shall exist only for you. So I'm the only thing that exists. That the urge, the desire of the body, the physical being on this earth, the human being, believes those words and starts as being seduced and kidnapped of its material life and starts to follow only that material being and someday it cannot walk anymore. And cannot be steady in living anymore because standing on one, one foot after a long while, you can't walk on just one leg. On one foot, how long do you want to walk? If you would have been able to do that, Allah would have given you just one leg and not two legs. And that's a sign for you to understand you can only walk on two legs. One leg. 
symbolize of the spiritual time and, and in a spiritual being and the other leg is your material being and if you are steadfast on both legs then you are walking ready and Allah has sent so many messengers to make us understand so we shall understand that we don't only live one life but actually two lives we are living the spiritual life and the materialistic life and subhanallah It's amazing that they're opening this to us so that we shall understand. Two lives a human being is living. And he still believes he's only living one life, but it's two lives. And he has to take care of both lives. And not to spoil the one over the other. And even so, only what is truly yours and that's everlasting will always be with you and that's your soul, your spiritual being only that being, your spiritual being and existence will truly be for eternity if you want eternity if you want to have the keys for eternity then you need to follow your spiritual being and not your materialistic being That materialistic being, starting from your birth, it's part of your sufferings in this world and leads you to the abyss of your life, your grave, and then your materialistic life is over. There is no further materialistic being or existence. Materialistic existence is only for three days. Yesterday, today and tomorrow. And we are thankful that the saints support us with the understanding that they are so patient with us and show so much understanding and without getting tired open their stories the wisdoms behind everything when did it start if our true being that essential being that eternal life If we follow that and are being f guided by that spiritual being inside of us and that we start a spiritual life as we are in a world of materialistic matters and this life we can't lead on just one leg, the materialistic leg. We need to use the tools of our soul And that is the body. The soul is be, can be seen through the body. And we need that material being for us to become visible and to be seen. But life, we actually live, we actually live two lives, the materialistic life and the spiritual side of our life. For three days, we have to respect the existence of the material, materialistic being inside of us. But we don't accept everything that it demands from us. We don't let us guide, but by our materialistic being. No, we have to be like father and mother to our materialistic being as we are guiding that materialistic being inside of that. And it has to be under control. We have to decide how and what our materialistic being has to spend its life. Because there can only be one. And if two are, if two are starting a journey, 
Sayyidina Muhammad said one of them has to be the guide, has to be the leader. And now we understand the hadith. If you start walking from one village to the next village, two people, one of them has to have the saying, have to have the last word. And now we understand what it means. You've got two lives inside of you and that you're living. And one of them we have to give up and respect, but don't accept everything that that, that one existence demands from you. But there are two beings inside of you. One being is the material, your materialistic being. Through that life, you have to get control. That's why all the prophets came and the saints as well. They are telling us non-stop, beware of the traps. And they keep on telling and telling and telling. And even if you haven't understood with our eyes and our head, you will have understood that we have never to give up. So you can't always understand the saints. And they have a patient and understanding and they are talking non-stop. And just like a mother for the, to the child, so full of understanding and taking care of its child. In most cases, beyond the limitations of patience, it's taking care, having showing so much mercy. You can only pass the limits of patience once you've entered the oceans of mercy. Without mercy, you will never be able to do so, because patience will have an end to it. That's why so many prophets came. Yunus a.s., such a great prophet. Nuh a.s., such a great and blessed prophet. And they both lost patience. And they said, it's over, I no more. May what happen, what it's supposed to happen to them. And, and we are not allowed to say that because we are of the Prophet Muhammad and of his nation. And that's the difference between, as we are of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and we have sent you as an endless ocean of mercy into existence. You are the oceans of mercy. That's why we follow him. We don't follow Yunus. We don't follow Nuh Ailes. We are following Muhammad Sallallahu And we are loving his mercy. Once he was stoned, Jebra Salam came and said, just one word and I will cast my wing and throw them to the ground and they will never stand up again. Allah gives you that permission to, to say so. And Sayyidina Muhammad was bleeding everywhere and was stoned and was punched and said, don't do it, let them be. Maybe there's one among them that who will that will understand. If not so, then one of the children of them. If not them, one of the grandchildren or some of their grand grandchildren will understand. But if we send them underneath the earth, then there won't be any hope for them, nor for their, their grand-grand-grandchildren. So for eternity, because they won't have any any children to come after them and to become a believer and to ask for forgiveness, they won't have that chance. So, And what a great mercy he showed it. And he wanted those that to, that those people who didn't want to understand and that were insisting on their ignorance, that maybe their children or children of children will understand and that they will do toe before their, for them in, in, in their stead. What a mercy, but that is his job, that's his work, his profession, that's his reward.
And we have sent you an act of mercy to this world, O Muhammad. So show it what you are made of. And we are his ummah, his nation, and we are as his representatives in this world. And and what he didn't, what we don't understand with our open eyes and so on, but we may understand in our dreams. The Sheikh was telling me that in my, and in my dreams I understood the truth. Oh, how good for you. That's mercy. You are tired. They are never tired. You try to, from, to sacrifice only as little as possible from your ego, but we sacrificed everything for you. We have nothing in it for ourselves. His life, your life, their life, it's his life. All of your life became into his life, and he asks of you that you make your life to his life. Share it. And keep along with the suffering and, and take it. And we have two lives inside of us. That one life, we have to get control over it with our spiritual being and if we've got and if we gave the control um, of our life into that spiritual being we have a control spiritual life blessed by allah and there has to be a unity with that and body and soul have to be in unity and have to walk together and one of them has to follow the other and that is the materialistic life has to follow the spiritual being because the materialistic being will have an end to it. And but when we have no and as we won't have any beginning or end with without the spiritual being being its guide into uh, eternity. So we need to look out for our spiritual being, that we follow that. And then together we'll enter eternity. And then we have nobody lost. In paradise, we are with body and soul, not only like a ghost. Meanwhile, in this, with the humans of these times, there is no unity between their body and souls, and so they get sick, and we all are suffering. And no matter how much sicker we do, no matter how much we meditate, as long as we don't practice that, that our body and our thoughts, our actions, to be under control and order of our spiritual being and spiritual recommendations and guidance and we haven't submitted them to those we won't be able to go anywhere because you might have meditated you say it but and you give your promise but you don't follow it you don't follow up with your tongue with your actions and thoughts you don't follow the recommendation it's all worth nothing and if the recommendation made nations of the heavens if you don't follow those no matter how much you meditate it will be for nothing so we've got like a theoretical like driving maybe you have theoretical understanding of driving but you will never get a driver's license even if you um, got through the test with zero mistakes but you have to have practice as there is no, no unity between those. You want to have the one side, but you don't do the other one, but you need to do it. The recommendations of the heavens, you have to follow them. Your body has to follow, not your soul, because the soul is already under the control of the Lord. 
Your body has to follow. Your life has to follow. Your action and manners have to be according to the heavenly recommendations. They are heavenly rules. And you have to follow those. And if you did that, then everything will be in unity. And then you will become the insani kamil, the complete human being. And you're perfect. And everything inside of you is in perfect completion. Your life of style, the way how you are with everybody, how you're standing in life with everybody, that you are praying for Allah and to Him. You're praying and you're meditating, but you don't do what He, he tells you to. As He tells you how to control your ego, how to treat your body, how to treat others then you may be filling up your tank, but everything's going into a, an empty depot that has a big hole inside. You can do a few steps. You, oh, I'm getting some power and I can keep on walking. But um, you're, you're drained already. And what, what's happening there? There's a net. Something is leaking. <laughs> And you have to find that leak where everything is going, going out again. May we maybe live a life in unity and that the saints shall guidance and that we only get there if we if you are being guided by the saints and the light of of Allah and only those and if we say that we follow those it means the body will follow as well it means if you pray you should That's not easy to do, but the way how you treat others in your daily life according with everybody else should be treated. And, and if you're praying and inside the presence of the Lord, there is no trial because the only trial is to wash yourself spiritually. It's hard and it's not easy to do, like praying five times a day. But there's no other trial for you to be tested in, or provocation, because it comes from another side. And you have to be prepared how to act as an authority how to act towards the mistakes of others, of those who are subordinate to you, or those who were entrusted to you. And that's a better word, those who were entrusted to you. The subordinate doesn't work. We are not a tyrant. We are just an authority. I'm not a tyrant. I'm someone you who was entrusted. I'm the entrustee of God. And something has been entrusted to you, trust was put in you. And I have to prove that, that I treat that was entrusted to me accordingly with respect. And that's the task of our life. According to mercy, understanding, your ego needs to follow that, but with discipline. And our task of those who had been entrusted is to follow that and to be careful that we don't fall, that we don't be respectless, that we don't lose respect and that we know how to act accordingly. And no matter what situation we are in, because because it's easier there for an authority to understand it's entrusted it's very also very important that those who have, have been entrusted to someone that they understand their entrustee 
because the Lord is endless in its under understandings and wisdom and it's always coming out and over and over again the, sh the, the boss says something different almost the opposite of what the um, subordinate thinks should be done and our brother has so many contra ideas but in the end he has to give up and here's your money here's my money and everything else and do what I would do and if they haven't listened to you and it's not my problem anymore <laughs> just do what he says and everything else is not under your responsibility and may Allah give us good understanding may our body and soul work together in unison but our body and this may follow the voice of our soul and the recommendations of us, our soul and treat as superior to its own evil one. Brother. Maulana Sheikh Nadal once said 
normal students, they need to look out for every 40 days, if not possible, not every second 40 days, if every fourth 40 days, that they should try at least once to see the sheikh in his physical body and listen to him, because as normal students, we are not we're not in the position we don't have the ability to see our sheikh the light of god non-stop in front of our eyes and to, to even hear his word but that's exactly what our souls need and our body especially the soul because the soul needs only then will be impris- um, set free and with complete enlightenment and can come with the strength if the soul is non-stop in the divine presence and that can only happen in this world before they died the sufi is the one that died before he actually died and and the soul's light will only open if he is non-stop with his sheikh as the sheikh is the hand of god and of the divine presence in his presence to always the, the soul is always in the divine presence and it can always expand and can become lighter and lighter and lighter and its endless strength can finally shine through and the body is not suffering anymore and that is this opening for all of us even for me this is the secret why Sayyidina Muhammad once said one hour with a sheikh in the divine in the presence of the spiritual master is like hundred years of prayer non-stop the same 700 years of prayer it is non-stop it's the same as if spending one hour with a sheikh no matter what what a blessing and this is opening to ourselves and our grand sheikh said always in, inside of my my inner eye he's my sheikh is all with me i always see him with body and soul just one moment of eye movement if i would have if I ever would lost um, him out of my sight i would be out of um, complete strength and, and power because I'm just like non-stop connected to him and my power and my source of power is over there and that you have always to be there and our spiritual connection by a heart is a practice that for us to get that goal of constantly being with Sheikh and um, to have a constantly connected into that plugin and that you're always with them, always connected. And then the soul is always inside in the divine presence, not like in the night uh, when it can leave and comes back at day where it's imprisoned, but then the soul is always in divine presence because it can, it, it's allowed to be there always with their support and help of the sheikh. And that's why it's important to become Minafi Sheikh, Minafillah. So the first step is Minafi Muri, to always be with the Murid at all times, and to get through that, and to accept that, and to work through that. But then with our heart, that our ears of the heart, eyes of our heart are always in connection with the div- um, with the Sheikh's presence and, and to be in his presence non-stop. And then if he gives us permission that we shall always have the Prophet in front of our eyes and to always listen to his word, then we are becoming Finafi Rasul and we will have got to the next step. And then the last step is Finafi Lallah. And then we'll be the complete, perfect human because the soul becomes free. And now we are training with the first step, Finafi Rasul. 
in which is the lowest point. And even though I'm already in haste, this is a very important matter. And this is Rabita, interesting. And that is that we have to walk in unity with our true lives, our soul and body that we are in sync. But, but and our nefs and um, soul are together, but our soul has to be the guide. And with the love of the sheikh, that, that we learn to control our physical being. And if the ego doesn't walk out of free will, we have to tackle it with its control. And that's what we're doing here. We try to imprison our ego, put it in chains, and try to pull it behind us. That eventually um, we say, we're only going to work with our souls and our ego just has to follow. That's where we are at now.